Good afternoon, everybody. Mike here. Uh, wasn't really going to do much for this video because really all we have right now is the Sabres. But I do have some interesting thoughts on the Miami Dolphins quarterback situation, which normally wouldn't be relevant. But the fact is the Bills are playing the Dolphins this Sunday, and it's just kind of interesting to think about uh, what's going on there. Um, so, as everybody knows, Tua Tungavailoa is the Dolphins' starting quarterback. He's having a semi-respectable season. He did miss three games plus most of the game with Buffalo due to an injury he took from a hit. And on his season, he's actually putting up what would be decent stats for completion percentage at 69.5%. 835 yards, that's a little skewed because of the fact that he did miss... Almost all of the game with Buffalo. Touchdown to interception ratio, not the greatest. But there he there's part of the thing. I don't believe he has much to work with. He has a re receiver. I can't really name any of the receivers. Not really worried about any of the receivers. And Gasicki really is the only receiving threat on that team that I'd really be superiorly worried about. Um, that being said, the Miami Dolphins are said to be looking at acquiring Deshaun Watson, former starting quarterback of the Houston Texans. This is interesting. I'm not a fan of the way that the Dolphins have approached bringing up Tungavailoa. I think they, um, for lack of a better word, relied too much on the fact that Ryan Fitzpatrick was there last season, and I don't feel that they're doing a very good job developing him. I feel like that the Dolphins keep putting somebody over his shoulder that he has to look out for, and I don't think this is a good way to develop a quarterback. And normally I wouldn't care what the Dolphins are doing because of the fact that the Miami Dolphins, but I'd like to see a good rivalry and the Bills-Dolphins rivalry from back when I was a kid and a teenager. It was outstanding. It was years of Kelly and Marino, games mattering, just playoffs. I believe they met in the AFC Championship game once. So it meant a lot back then, the Bills-Dolphins games, and I'd really like to go back to that. And to me, the way they're bringing up Tonga Vailoa, I don't think that he is going to be the answer to be that star quarterback, that franchise quarterback, the way that the Bills brought up Josh Allen and made him from what was basically a rough project into a very good quarterback, a top, maybe one of the top five quarterbacks in the league, maybe top three. He is really that good, and he's doing a lot, especially the last season plus, to make the Bills a successful team. But he doesn't have to look over his shoulder. He doesn't have to worry about anybody coming for him. And he has pieces around him. He has weapons. He ha Allen has Diggs. He has Emmanuel Sanders. He has Cole Beasley. Gabriel Davis. Isaiah McKenzie. Dawson Knox is coming out on his own. Devin Singletary. Zach Moss. I mean, the list is long. If you want to, you can even throw Jake Kumaro out there and know you'll get production from him. But I don't feel that Tonga Valoa has that in Miami, and I think that's not the best way to bring him up. So that's going to be really interesting to see how this impacts his development and what they do in the meantime, because the trade deadline in the NFL is coming up. It's on Tuesday, November 2nd. Deshaun Watson is not likely to have his legal trouble settled by then. So that solidifies uh, Tonga Vailoa's position now. But why would you even put yourself in a position, put yourself out there where you're looking for a guy that can come in and start for you when you have a young quarterback that you spent last season, if things weren't going right, throwing in the veteran and he wasn't learning on the fly? That's the problem I have with this whole situation in Miami. I mean, it's kind of a mess. 
to me, it's not a solid situation for bringing up a quarterback. And quite frankly, I would like to see a return to the Bills-Dolphins rivalry meaning something. And I don't think this is the way to get there. I think you need to let either let him play out, get talent around him, or you need to sit him, let him watch. But he needs to know which role he's in. Not that sometimes you're in, sometimes you're out, wishy-washy stuff that seems to be going on right now. But normally I wouldn't waste my time going on Bills opponent stuff, but it is relevant to the fact that it is the Bills team, the Bills opponent this weekend, and I just find it interesting. So I decided to throw out a short video, just my quick thoughts on it. But honestly, I don't think they're going to pick up Deshaun Watson. I don't think they're going to take the risk because, like I said, his legal problems aren't likely to be solved by the trade deadline, and I think that is one of the conditions that they had for wanting to pick him up. Um, just uh, just quick notes. Sabres won last night. This is being recorded on Friday. Sabres won last night 4-3 to three in overtime in what was a game, I believe, that was a lot closer than it should have been. Anaheim appears to be where the Sabres were last season after Granado had his two-week turnaround to get the team from Kruger mode to uh, Don Granado mode. Um, so I think... That yes, Anaheim is a tough team to play against. They do have skill. They have, got they still have Getzlaff, Ricard, Raquel, Jakob Silverberg. Zegras is going to be a good player. Troy Terry is going to be a good player. Max Steele should be a good player. Jamie Drysdale should be good on defense for them. They still have Cam Fowler, who's still not even thirty yet. So and uh, John Gibson, if they put even a halfway competent defense in front of him, he is a world class goaltender. So. But I think this game is closer than it should have been. I th just think that the... But I think the Sabres played a team that's basically a mirror of them. Like I said, this is, uh, Ducks team was basically the Sabres from last season. So I do expect that it was going to be a hard game. But I think it should have been a hard game to play. Not, as, not necessarily finish with less than a minute remaining in overtime. Um, that's all for today. I don't really have much. Didn't really plan on doing much this week with so little going on with the Bills being on by and the Sabres schedule so spread out. So you can catch us, us as in the 716 Sports Podcast, that little logo right in the middle of the end there. Uh, you can catch us. We release on Tuesdays. We are likely to be back in the studio recording because the Bills are playing the Dolphins this week in Orchard Park. The Sabres will have one more game against LA on Sunday on Halloween. And... Who knows what will happen at that time because this will be also be getting to the end of the trade deadline and that should make things pick up nicely. All right, I will talk to you later. Check us out, 716 Sports Podcast, 716 Sport Podcast on Twitter. And my social media, my Twitter and email are right above my head and on the screen. I will talk to you later.